appreciate someone just texted me and I should probably unmute the mic. So, hey, I'll, let me start over again real quick. Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for jumping on. I really appreciate you jumping on this morning. I got a special guest and I wanted to bring him on because this is such a critical thing, I think, for businesses. When we when we jump into 2021 and, you know, who knows what we're going to get this year. Maybe it's Sharknados, I keep saying. Um, we need all the solutions as business owners, as marketers, as salespeople in our pockets. And that's exactly why I wanted to bring on our special guest here today, Sean Clark from High Level. Um, definitely a phenomenal market mover shaker. And I wanted him to share kind of like the whys and, and where things are going and, and just really have an open conversation. I think that'll be beneficial for a lot of people, have a lot of good solid information. So, hey, if you do me a big favor, those jumping on, please do me a solid favor right now. Share this out, like it, share it, get it out, get it on out to the, all the platforms because the more business people you help right now, I think this is going to be a game changer for so many different businesses. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get our intro started. And I'll be right back with our special guest, Sean Clark. All right. Good morning. Hey, Sean. Good morning. Thanks for joining good morning. me. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm excited to get started for the day. So this is perfect. Fantastic. Hey, nothing like starting the day out and, and talking about I know something you love, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and and guys, just I want you to share like, you know, so if you don't know what high level is, it's definitely worth checking out. And of course, we'll have some URLs here that we can drop. But I mean, Sean, first of all, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about you? Who's, who's Sean Clark? Sure. Uh, I'm a software engineer by trade, but I've always been really passionate about um, helping small businesses and, and using the power of software to do that. So um, that's kind of what I've spent my career doing and, and what I continue to do today. So, Right. And, and I mean, I can just say as a, as, a, as a customer, you know, watching the passion that you have, you're very, very active with, with, your, with your customer base. You're involved. You actually get in there. And that's one of the things that I'm like, man, this, this guy's this guy really cares and his team really cares. And so from the top down, it's going to flow and it's going to create a better and better product, right? I think so. I think, you know, we're, we're, we're a little bit different in the sense that, you know, we really try to play our position, but we also understand our limitations and we really lean on our customers to help us fill in the gaps. And, you know, we feel like we're on a, on a mission with our customers. We feel like we're in a partnership with them. Um, so it's a little bit different. You know, it's, we certainly, want to be out there every day providing value, but we feel like we get a, a, as much value back from our customers as we give. So it's a, it's a really fun exchange. Okay. Fantastic. Now, where, what are some of the different things? Let's, let's wind back before high level, because mm -hmm. I think the journey, and, and this is, I think there's a few aspects that I want to try to cover here for our audience, because on Be Growth Driven, one of the things that I want to try to cover is those, you know, folks like yourself, they've gone through hurdles, they've gone through challenges, because a lot of times people will look at like someone like you and they're like, well, he's had it easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're, they're like, <laughs> of course he can do it. Right. You know, so what, what would you say? I mean, tell us a little bit about like what, what's been the journey to this point? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, I, I dropped out of college. I don't know how far back you want to go uh, to start and found a business that I ran with a co-founder for 12 years and was, um, a, a lot of fun helps a lot of small businesses. And then in the end, ultimately ended up losing everything um, and having to start over. So that was, um, that wasn't too pleasant. Um, and then I grew a software company after that to about a thousand uh, small business customers off my kitchen table. And, you know, that was just literally every single day. I was a full founder, uh, uh, entrepreneur, garbage taker outer. Um, and I just sat there every day and, and built that business one customer at a time and, and, you know, did all the customer support and all of those th things. So, you know, there's, there's, a, there's been a big journey to this, to this moment, always working with small businesses, always trying to help small businesses. Um, but you know, not necessarily <laughs> always winning and always, um, you know, always crushing it as they say. So right. it's definitely been a struggle. Um, I would say daily. In fact, I'd say to this day, there, it's still a struggle. So, um, I'll, I'll call you on the day it gets easy, but I haven't seen it yet. Right. 
Well, and, and I, I appreciate you kind of sharing just those brief points along the way, because I think a lot of times people look at, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a business owner and it should all go just dandy. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, they don't want, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh no. I, I just I mean, it's I mean, I, I think that is I think that is the problem. I think that I mean, it's hard to sell, a, you know, selling headlines, whether you're a major newspaper or a tech publication or a whatever, you know, it's much cooler to say, you know, so and so and I'm in the SaaS world and the software as a service world. And so for us, it's always so and so just raised $40 million or so and so just got bought out by, you know, for $2 billion. And, you know, those are the headlines that really are sizzle worthy. But I don't think that they really um, underpin the real story. And I don't think they speak to the vast majority of the people who are out there trying to build a, a durable, sustainable business. Um, and I think if anything, they, they, they sort of create a fantasy um, that just doesn't exist. And so I think I think that, that that's what makes it hard for people like myself when we're actually in the trenches trying to do something different and, right. and grow something. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I, from a business standpoint, um, I mean, you take a pay cut, <laughs> number one, right? You, you got to be, you got to be this, you got to be an emotional therapist. No, no, you know, you got to be there. You got to be willing to be there for your oh, people. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and I, I, the list just kind of goes on. You, like you said, you got to be the garbage out, you know, get a garbage guy. You got to be this guy, this guy. Uh, you know, I, I remember when I, when I started, it's like, you know, I, I started with wiring my network, you know, and, and doing those things and, and do, you know, I was, I'm the one that sits there and, and, you know, I'm still here at, you know, at the beginning stages at one o'clock in the morning, still working away, <laughs> you know, uh, servers go down you get, you gotta, you gotta get on the program. Right. So, oh, yeah. and, and, but, but let me ask you this, what along the way has been the rewards that you've seen, like the commissions? Cause you know, we're talking about why would you even do this? Why not yeah. just work for somebody? That's a good question. I, I, you know, sometimes I ask myself that question. Um, no, but I mean, I think, for me, it's just about trying to kind of paint on my own canvas and trying to go out and do something in a way that I feel like is is helping people and really having control of that and being able to, you know, make it my own. And at the end of the day, seeing the people who say, you know, they built a business on the platform we've created is just awesome. Um, and so I think those things kind of really help motivate you and keep you going, um, you know, and I guess for me, that's really why I do it. Right. I, I, you know, I see some, like, I'll just give an example. It's like, we have a, there's a small business owner we're working with now, um, you know, and, and just hearing his wins. And, and by the way, this is a, a client that we're using your SAS on. Oh, right? cool. That's and, awesome. And so, you know, he's, he's right now, he's, he's starting to, it's a small construction. And this is actually just a testament to, you know, for, for those of you that are listening to this product called go high level, you know, this, for this client, um, you know, they're trying to start a business from nothing, from just scratch and nothing. And and the the amount of thought and detail that Sean Clark and his team has put into this, it's created now a guy that that I think week one, they hit their quote, their goal of about, I think, almost uh, like fifteen thousand dollars book revenue. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, he's already a smart guy because he hired you, right? So I, mean, I, would say, <laughs> I, I would say he's 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 already out of the gate looking pretty good. I mean, I would say that the biggest mistake I've seen small business owners make is they immediately think, okay, well, I'm good, I'm good at the thing that I do. I'm good at construction, but I'm also now going to go and try to pick up marketing on the side and figure this all out. And like, it's kind of like <laughs> like a hobby or something. And I get it. It's it, you know, it's about trying to save money and and those sorts of things. But I find. Right. It's one of those. It's one of those decisions in life when you when you're making it. You maybe you're not that confident in it because you just haven't done it before. But the outcomes are almost always better than if you had tried to do it yourself. And so um, I think businesses who hire agencies and work with professional marketers always always out, outlast and uh, their competition. Right. And well, now for businesses, I, I think one of the important things, and maybe you'll agree too, for let's say for a business that they don't want to try to handle this all themselves. Okay. Uh, it's important though that they understand how it works. Oh, sure. I, th I don't think there's anything wrong with understanding. I mean, I think this is, you know, I, I think the idea is it, it, great professional marketers do not try to hide um, the strategy or hide right. what they're doing. And they simply just show 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 the, what they're doing and, and show how amazing it is and how awesome the results are. I mean, I don't think it's any different than, you know, in some sense, hiring an outside bookkeeper or an accountant or something where it's not like those people are geniuses and they've got some secret magic formula it's just you look at it and you're like oh okay 
I see the complexity. I see the continual learning. I see the evolution. I see the change in the market. And I realize that that's not my strength. And if I'm going to build a business, I need to stick to the thing that I know and hire out the things that I don't. Right. Well, and so now when they see the different pieces, how they go, some people, I, I always talk with like my team here too, is sometimes uh, like when we're talking with a client, hang on a second, we got, uh, we got uh, Clubhouse going here too. Listen. Oh, no. <laughs> so, hey, for those of you jumping on Clubhouse, what we, who we're talking to is Sean Clark from Go High Level. We're talking about SaaS. We're talking about marketing automation. We're talking about how companies can grow with this. So when when I'm talking to a lot of clients too, obviously the end result is where their focus is. Absolutely. Right. They're like, I want the lead. I I, I just want I want the I want to collect the money. I'm like, I'm with you. Right. But, but there's all these other pieces that have to come into play. There's there's the you know where do we start up upstream to get them into the funnel process to where you can nurture them to finally get that appointment. Absolutely. Right. And there's a lot of moving pieces that go into that. So as, as you started down, you know, this, this, and you and I've had a conversation before where you shared some of the different things that you've done along the way, but as, as you guys started high level, what was the first objective that, that you guys started? What was the main, like, yeah. So, I mean, I was, I had a, I was just coming off a prior SaaS business that had helped small businesses on the accounting side. And I had just simply asked all of those people, listen, you know, what, what else, can I do? How can I help? What are you missing in your business? And they all said the same thing. You know, we want more customers. And so I thought, okay, well, let, let me let me look at it. Let me let me think through what I believe is the best way for a small business to get to immediate value. And you know, we came out with the initial version of High Level, which was simply just reputation management plus two-way text messaging. And I thought this will be great. People will love this. And I went out and I and I sold it to a bunch of customers that I had already had on my prior. Uh, product and um, they, you know, I would show the demo and they would say, I love it. It's amazing. And then two weeks later, they would call back and they would cancel. And I would say, Oh my God, well, I don't get it. What, ha what happened? You said it was amazing. And they would always say the same thing. They'd say, Oh, it is amazing. And the demo was great, but we just don't have time to make this all happen in our, in our organization. And what it came down to was, you know, we have this sort of way that we run into the office every day and operate, and we just can't figure out how to, how to add on anymore, do anymore. And I would even explain, look, you know, this will double the size of your business this year. And many of them would agree with it. And yet they still just can't make it happen. And I realized, you know, well, I didn't, I didn't realize in that moment, but I eventually realized um, thanks to uh, a marketing agency coming in and, and showing me the way that, you know, it's, it's the marketing agency who's that sort of that bridge, that gap between that small business every day doing their thing, operating their business, but also needing to grow, needing to bring in more leads, needing to nurture them along the process. And whether that agency is doing the work or simply teaching some of the work or in most often a combination of the two, I mean, that's what every small business needs to be successful. Um, and so that's why we focused 100% on agency since then. Okay. Well, and then that, that actually, what you're basically doing, it's actually a brilliant from a business standpoint because you're creating your, your, your sales force to go out there and help move the product, right? So, you would, I mean, you would think so. Although, I mean, I, I would say what makes us very different than everyone else is that the, the the agencies are not selling our product direct, right? They're not selling our brand; they're selling their own. Um, I mean, we we sell on a hundred percent white label basis today, and one of the biggest reasons why is because I want to make sure that down the line people don't get the funny idea that somehow the software has some magic secret button in it where the like the money you know, hit the money button. But it's really that combination of a professional marketer, professional marketing skills right. and the platform that really, really matters. So while there are definitely some organizations that have professional marketers, I find the average dentist, plumber, you know, lawyer doesn't necessarily have those skills or isn't willing to learn them, doesn't want to learn them. And so you, you need both to make it happen. Right. Right. And, and for those of, on, uh, those of you on Clubhouse, if you want to join the YouTube live here, text join to 402 Three four seven nine seven seven zero. That's four zero two three four seven nine seven seven zero. Just text the word join, and uh, we'll, my team will get you the link real quick so you can jump on and, and see what we're talking about here, uh, or just you know sit on Clubhouse and listen too. So, um, when when you started, you started out with just this basic message automation, those types of things. What was mm -hmm. like? The, how did this evolve? Because yeah, sure, you're on like a. You guys, your team's on fire right now. I mean, <laughs> like one thing after the next. I just love it. Yeah, we're not done yet either. But, you know, if I look at so really what we came into life to do at the end of the day was 
the lead to customer journey. Because if we look at most small businesses, they have some type of lead flow. And if they have a professional marketing agency that they're working with or professional marketers, the lead flow really can 10x. But the leads are just the first part of the journey. And you know, we met plenty of marketers and plenty of business owners who would get spreadsheet after spreadsheet of, of names and phone numbers and quote unquote leads. And then they would say, well, yeah, but they didn't go anywhere, they didn't convert. And you know, if they were working with a professional marketer, they almost always fired that person and told them, look, your leads are garbage, they're terrible. Um, and then right. when we, but when you look at it, you're like, wait a second, are these really bad? And it turns out that the answer is no, actually, they're great. The problem that they are running into is they don't understand the value of the nurture process. And so what I always tell people to do is go out and Google the MIT lead study. And it's just basically where MIT looked at millions of leads and followed them from the time they got generated all the way to whether they closed into a sale or they were abandoned. And they just try to figure out like, hey, well, what makes, you know, why do some leads close and why do some leads not close? And it turns out it's really simple. It's speed the lead first and foremost. Can you get to the lead within the first five minutes or less? If you do, the likelihood of close goes way up. And then if right. the lead doesn't close immediately off that first touch point, can you hang with the lead as long as it takes to, con to convert that lead? Right. And so, so high level, we looked at that problem, we realized, you know, business owners are not gonna naturally just do this for themselves. And so we automated that whole process. So what we right. really do today and what we're really proud of and what we really focus on is from the time that lead hits the system, we're reaching out to it within the first minute. And then if that person doesn't respond, book an appointment, we follow up with the lead until they do. So for us, that's really the problem where we're most focal on and everything else that we add to the platform really just tries to lead people into that place where they can start that journey because right. we know that's where small business owners lose the most money. Right. And, and, and actually a good solid testament to this, I'll, we'll, we'll give a use case scenario here. And again, hey, Luke, thank you for jumping on Clubhouse. If you want to join the actual conversation here, we'd love to have your input. Text JOIN to 402 Three four seven nine seven seven zero, and we're not bringing anybody on stage. It's it's uh, at this point, but we want you to join the conversation on YouTube. We got a YouTube live going here, so four zero two three four seven nine seven seven zero. Just text the word join. We'll get you the link, and we want to we want to get your comments in on here. So um, yeah, so like Larry's talking about times the the infinite, you know, the finite resource, and, and so it, it, and actually Larry, yes, uh, it, it's an automated CRM essentially. Um, so Larry, actually, Larry is 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 a is a good friend here that I've met here, and we're working with him on Sean. I've shared with you the information, like on our Pixel product that de-anonymizes site visitors, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like for Larry's case, he's a dealership, a car dealership, an auto dealership. So having that nurturement process of somebody that's hot on the site, touching them and nurturing them way before they're they're in that that exploratory phase, yep. right? What, what have you seen that do to like dealerships like his, you know, he's a I mean, GMC dealer. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we, I mean, my number one thing would be to make sure you have web chat enabled, <laughs> right. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we, we put web chat into our product specifically because I think it's one of the best ways for small businesses to connect with people on their websites, invariably, regardless of what you sell, I'm sure everyone's going to have a great website. It's going to present the product well, but at some point I kind of have to take that next step. And right. I think you, and the easiest way to do that is to just give me an open box to be able to come in and actually do that. Now, our, our chat's a little different. We don't do live web chat like some people do because we find that for small businesses, it's very ineffective. <laughs> Ultimately, small businesses owner, owners don't have people just sitting there ready to take chats. So what we do is we convert them into SMS conversations. And so that allows the business owner to basically be able to get back to that person pretty much any time um, later on. Obviously, the first five minutes are still critical, but being able to reach back and touch them on their actual cell phone or their mobile phone is huge, but it just makes it easy. At some point I'm on your website, I'm looking at the various vehicles, I'm wondering about something, do they have this color, do they have this option, are they gonna get this model in? But you know, I've gotta transact at that point and I don't wanna pick up the phone because I'm busy, I'm at work, my boss is watching me, but gosh, if there was just this little thing I could click and I could dash off a quick question, I might do that and now you've got a piece of engagement and you have an opportunity right. to jump in reach out, grab that customer, and then bring them to close. That to me is the number one thing every small business owner should do uh, to their right. website right now today. Well, and, and what, here's one of the things that I've appreciated. Like we were talking about, you guys are on fire with, with advancements and developments on the, 
the go high level platform. And whenever we bring this to clients, I'm very transparent. You know, we nicknamed it Connect 360 because, hey, it, it finishes the connection loop from data to automation to customer. Absolutely. Right. So but at the same time, I'm very transparent. I'm like, here's the help articles on go high level because we're giving you high level. The reason why you're going to work with me is because I'm, I'm going to be there to help you through it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as simple as that. Um, but like for what Larry's asking there, yeah, the way that you're, what you were talking about there, that SMS conversation is so powerful because now you have a piece of information that is like one of the most difficult pieces of information to sometimes get from somebody. And that's a phone number. That's right. And, you know, and on top of that, it's a phone number that you can, you can, you can not only call, but you can text, you can send a picture, you can send a, a number of things to. That's right. So now you have this bridging capability to, to really pull in a lot of data to help you make the sale. Now, the other cool thing that I like that you guys have um, have added to your platform is that that AI that's driving it. Right. Absolutely. And that's, and that's rather you know relatively. You guys have advanced that quite a bit. Tell us about you know how that yeah, works. Absolutely. So, I mean, in most businesses, when someone does reach out, they're 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 really ultimately trying to get a hold of an expert in that business. And in most cases, an expert, regardless, it could be a salesperson at a car dealership all the way you know, to an attorney, a doctor, whatever it might be, there, there needs to be some kind of appointment made because now you need an expert's time and that person is generally gonna be very scheduled. And so what we've done is bring the AI into the system to deal with that use case. So when people reach out, we can do things like say, Hey, thanks a lot for contacting, you know, um, our, our business, you know, uh, we'd love to, to, to help you. Um, are you trying to get a, you know, appointment scheduled to come see a vehicle, for example, in the car right. space? And then if that person writes back something like, sure, or yes, I am, or yeah, I'm interested in coming down to see like whatever the, whatever the positive is, the AI is really good at determining that that person's saying yes, or that person's saying no. And then based off that response, we can actually then say, oh, you know, oh, you are, you know, oh, great. Here's a link to our, you know, our dealership, you know, test drive calendar or whatever it is, you know, grab a time that works for you. And what's amazing about that is we can self book people into either coming in to see something or a, a Zoom a call or whatever the appointment right. will be about 50% of the time, um, just all automatically. Um, and people are really happy about that because of course, again, if you're intent on transacting with that business, that's really what you're looking for. I need an right. appointment. And so people are pretty excited about it. And, and again, we get these really high opt-in rates. And as a business owner, what does that mean? That means you're sitting there and all of a sudden your calendar just is getting filled up with appointments with, with people who want to come by from you. So it's, it's pretty cool to watch. Right. No, and, and actually we've seen that. And that's not just on SMS too. So going back to this life, you know, this real live example that I brought up earlier is, you know, we have a, a uh, concrete coding company and he's generating leads off of Facebook. And it's messenger leads, and they're pulling right in to uh, to high level, okay. And right away, we're you know it's engaging them with a question of, hey, how can we help you? And the yeah. way that you know it's it, beyond just a positive or negative response. You guys have set this up where it can actually recognize keywords. Yep. And then, but based upon that keyword, take them down the right chain of information. Absolutely. Right. So. Now, what tell us a little bit more about as far as like what what are some of the upcoming exciting things and how will this help businesses? How I mean, in twenty twenty one, the market share is getting thinner and thinner. Sure, absolutely. In some respects, just yeah. because of the noise, not yeah. because it really there, is. But I totally, I totally agree with that. Yeah. So there is a lot uh, that's going on um, out there in the small business space right now. I would say the for the local business, my the biggest innovations that I see are all around Google My Business. So. Um, and one of the big trends that I'm, I'm seeing there is messaging. So Google My Business um, is bringing messaging to the desktop later this year. Um, they've already launched local service ads, so they'll be bring, bringing messaging there. Anybody who is a local business, when someone searches your name or searches your keywords, Google is going to try really hard to keep that person from leaving Google. And one of the big strategies there is going to be messaging. So being able to actually turn that on is is going to be awesome so we'll have that actually in our platform next month um and the idea here is really simple every time a customer messages in we need to get back to them immediately right um, just i mean you you know you could go install the google my business app right now and i think you could turn it on on there and then you know what's going to happen right you're just going to miss 
tons of chats all day long because you're busy. You, you have other things you're doing. You're going to be at lunch. You're going to be on a call. It's response time that is going to matter. So as we go forward, you know, when people, people are going to find you and they're going to be easily able to reach out and talk to you, whether it's on web chat, whether it's on Met, Google My Business Messaging, and it's, it's about response. So first, the AI is going to, to, going to be there. And then eventually, um, we also have human rollover coming into play so that for the places the AI is imperfect, which there are still very many cases where AI can't do the job, we also have human-based rollover that will automatically jump in and engage that person and help bring them all the way to that next step. Right. So now... For a business, let's let's talk about like we got Larry here. He's saying, "How can we use this tool to generate leads?" Okay, Absolutely. and and also to those on on Clubhouse, if you want to join the conversation, we're having a conversation right now with Sean Clark from Go High Level Marketing Automation. If you've heard of things like ClickFunnels, th this this puts ClickFunnels on steroids. Essentially, I, I think that's that's my opinion of it. It takes it to the whole nother level. Um, if you want to join the conversation, text join to 402-347-9770, 402-347-9770. But so Larry's asking like, how can we use this tool to generate leads? So if, if for a business owner, how would you, what would be the first step? I have my, what I usually do with clients, but what, how would you tell them to make sense of this? Because they're probably going to, you know, work with a guy like me. What yep. do they need to be prepared to do? Well, I mean, again, I'll sound like a broken record, but I'll, I would just go right for the web chat. I mean, every single day, what business owners don't understand is that they have people that come to their website. I mean, obviously, do you have a Google My Business profile? I sure hope so. <laughs> you know, right. if, not, yeah. if not, start there, right? Because that's going to start to get you some visibility in Google. And then it, it, invariably, people are already are searching for anything it is that any, any possible service or product that's fulfilled locally, people are already searching for that. So it's just about first getting into the search stream. But I guarantee you, most business owners are at the point today where Every single day, they have people that come to their website and they think, well, I've got a nice website and I've got my phone number in the top right hand corner. I'm sure, you know, people are going to reach out and, and get a hold of me. But that's just not accurate. Every single day, people come to websites and they and they and they say, oh, you know, this might be interesting. It might be something I need to do. Ah, What do I do here? Where do I click? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, I got a call. Ah, you know what? I got to go run an errand too hard. Boom. And they're gone. So you lose so many people off your website every single day. You just don't even realize it. And so that's the number one thing I would do. I would go put that web chat widget on there. And I have seen it so many times where you put that on there and literally every single day, people get three people that write in and just say like, hey, you, you know, do you have a, you know, a, a 2020, you know, whatever on in blue on the lot? Well, boom, guess what? That's a lead. That's, that's, that's somebody who you can convert into a customer. So personally, right. that'd be my first step. Right. So, and Larry's asking, hey, is there a funnel component? And so, yeah, the short answer there, Larry, is yes, there's a funnel component to it. Yeah, we have a full replacement for, we have a full funnel builder, a full replacement for click funnels. And, and those are great. If you're running ads, you got to drive them to the funnel. That's fantastic. But right. that assumes you're running ads, you know, and um, not everybody is running ads. Um, ads are great. I think they're the, the absolute next step when it comes to generating traffic for the site. Right. And, and that's when the funnel comes in. Um, and that's when the lead capture piece comes in. But then that's also where the nurture piece becomes so important because capture all the leads you want, right? Um, good luck converting them if you don't have nurture in place because that right. speed to lead component, it's just critical to success. And if, because remember, I'm the consumer, I'm coming to you, I'm clicking your ad, I'm raising my hand, I'm showing interest. And what are you doing? Are you immediately getting back to me? Because if not, no thanks. I'm moving on. I got things to do. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna right. go call a competitor. I'm gonna go. Fix, I'm gonna go get distracted by something else in my day. You gotta have that nurture process, and that means getting back to that person within the first five minutes, or you lose a sale. Right, and that's that's what we've seen too. Going again back to that where we had it set up, and and the cool thing with this is it can really time things out because you don't wanna you don't wanna take away the feeling from the, that visitor. That's right. That someone's not personally caring for them, right? Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. The messaging needs to be personal. Like I always tell people to keep, you know, keep it really short. It's got to be the type of thing you would send to a friend or a family member, right? It, it, it should be like, hi, this is Bob at company name. Um, how can I help? Or do you want to schedule an appointment? And just stop because that's the sort of thing that someone would dash off in a text message. And that's the kind of thing that people are used to getting. And also the other big thing is always ask a yes or no question out of the gate. Because yes or no questions are psychologically easier for human beings to answer. You, ask, I see a lot of people go really voluminous and will ask some open right. question or something. You know, oh hey, thanks a lot for registering for ad. Tell us your life story. Tell me your life story. You know, and it's like, right. give me a break. It's just brain overload.
But if you ask a yes or no question, you know, it's very, very easy. Hey, you know, would you like to book an appointment? Can I get you uh, uh, scheduled out to get an estimate? You know, people will say, well, people will respond to that. And right. you keep kind of following up and following up and asking that same question. And eventually the reply rates on text are just stratospheric. They're 98% um, oh. in our, if, if done right. And at that point, you know, even if that person says no, you can react to that, right? You can say, okay, no problem. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll put you on the, we'll put you on the mailing list. And, you know, if you need something down the road, let us know. And then, I'll, so either way you create engagement. Fantastic. You know, and that's, that's what, you know, after all, like business itself, it's, it's gotta be a one-on-one -on -one relationship, right? I, nobody wants to get a text message from a robot or a business. People want to get a contact from a person. Right. And, and the, the other thing I was thinking of as you were talking there too, it's like, uh, you know, you got to keep it short and simple. So these are like, like some sales tips here. So just basic con, you know, reasonable common sense sales tips. It's like, you got to keep it short and simple because it, you know, dumping that, that whole load of information, it's like getting those LinkedIn messages that we probably all get. Right. I get these long paragraphs and I'm like, nah, I don't yeah. even read that. Yeah. It, it, your, I mean, what people don't realize is that, brain, that your brain is actually pre-wired to make snap judgment calls. And so it's like, you know, if I can flash an email in front of somebody's eyes and make it disappear and just ask spam or no spam and people, uh, the accuracy rate is off the, off the chain. Because if you think about it, the spam emails all look the same fundamentally. They're long. They tend to have lots of, they'll have, if they have lots of images, if they've got, you know, all kinds right. of graphs, like all this other stuff, it's very, very, very easy for, for most people's minds to just immediately seize upon those details and say, nope, and they just file it away. And so the same thing goes with text. And um, if you get some big old long text or big old long LinkedIn thing, you just know, ugh, they're just trying to sell me some garbage and you move on. Right. So one of the things that I advise clients and, and you know, add your input here too, when they're going down this journey, if they don't have something like this implemented right now, the first thing they need to do is just, you know, grab a good old notepad and start drawing out kind of like, what's the process? Okay, someone, I shook hands with the guy. You know, I, I, I said hello to the guy. What's next? What's the next thing I'm going to ask? And the next thing I'm going to ask. And I think, you know, some of some of our audience are, are, are follow Grant Cardone. So they they understand the idea of a very, you know, a scripted. And I, and I think scripted is not necessarily, it's not wrong. It's in, de in fact, it has to be because that's where you find out what works and what doesn't work. And that one of the cool features I, I like about your program is it basically it, it's showing us those stats. So it's showing us how many people are responding to that text message, how many are, are, you know people are using this. Um, the other cool thing that I, I think that you guys have added there, too, is that that integration like with Twilio, where you can add those tracking numbers. You can say, hey, I'm going to use this number on my, you know, for example, Larry, in your case, if you're doing any newspaper, you're going to put a number just for the newspaper. You're going to put a number just for the radio. And what the cool part is, is every time somebody calls, it's generating a lead that can now be nurtured. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Call tracking is, uh, is, is you know, really not, not as widely used as it should be. I mean, even in Google My Business, you know, there's a really great trick where you can, you can put your primary number in the secondary position in Google My Business and put a tracking number for your primary and you won't lose any of your Google My Business rankings. But then overnight, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to track all of that stuff. So. Um, and again, you'll also be able to automatically respond. So like a, a great thing with uh, call tracking, at least this is how it works in our system. You can set it up so that if somebody calls and you miss that call, you can actually automatically text that person back. It's called missed call text back. I can't tell you how many times a small business owner will miss a phone call. It's It, it happens all the time. And what do we know about phone calls? They're the best leads. <laughs> phone calls are calls in general are an interruptive concept. You have to stop what you're doing. You have to get on the phone. You have to, you have to, you have to focus and you can't multitask. So that right. type of inbound coming into a business, I mean, it's worth so much money. And so as a result, if you miss that call, cause you are busy being able to text that person back, you get a second bite at the apple. And now you can actually turn that into a lead and not lose that sale. Fantastic. What, what are, so maybe give us a little bit of a highlight. What's, what's, what's in the future? What's coming? Yeah. So, I mean, again, a big focus on Google My Business. We have a drag and drop workflow builder that's coming out at the end of this month um, that I think is going to be really big um, and, and important. Um, I think for, for us, it's about just making sure that 
all of these technologies that we've already created. I mean, it, it, I can't tell you, you know, whether it's web chat or missed call text back or um, workflow automation or email marketing or whatever it might be, where people will say, oh, I had no idea. Or, you know, the AI component people, I, I get, you know, we get, we're at the point now where from a feature set perspective, I could, I can double anybody's business. You give me a small business today who's, who's not working with a professional marketer, you take our, our product and you put it with the right professional marketer, easily double any local business, period, end of story. Um, and so for me, it's now just about, okay, how do we make sure that when people come in, they understand all the value that's there and they're able to get it working in their business as quickly as possible. I think it goes down to, you know, if you fail to plan, you, you plan to fail. So <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> right. But I think 2021 is going to be great for small business. I mean, I think there's a lot of, a lot of hope on the horizon. And I think for, for, for many, many scenarios, I mean, I think one of the biggest things is, you know, we've all had to embrace digital technology, not only on the business side, but also on the consumer side. So, you know, as a result, the consumers are now more engaged on the digital channels than they were, and they're more likely and, and willing to respond and go through those sorts of digital steps. And I think that's going to be massive for small business owners because it should make things a lot more efficient and should make things a lot easier in terms of connecting with that customer and bringing them either into your location or, you know, into your business one way or another. Fantastic. Well, Sean, you and your team, again, you guys are amazing. Uh, you, you've given me a very valuable portion of your day, and I appreciate that. Well, um, thanks for having me. It's and, great. And, and hey, for those of you that are listening, for those of you that are watching right now, if you want to learn more about Go High Level, just simply text the word High Level to 402-347-9770. So 402-347-9770, just text the word High Level, and we'll have it on our screen here, I'm sure, in just a moment. Um, I, I have uh, Jesse there working on that right now. Um, but, but Sean, I definitely appreciate it. I mean, this is for small business. A lot of times they look at what they're, they look at the big boys, they, you know, right. And they're like, well, you know, I'm not a big boy. I can't do that stuff. And so it's, it's, it's guys like you that are putting innovations like this out there that are just, I mean, if you, if you think of the component of what you're doing for small business, you're helping dreams come true. You That's what I mean. I'm passionate about it. I think small business owners are great community members. I think they, pay, they they're innovative. Um, they're way more innovative than the larger companies. They care more about their people. They pay better on average. I mean, across the board, you know, if you think about it, fundamentally, big companies have a big stake in just sitting there doing nothing and just holding the high ground. Right? They're not right. they're not pushed to innovate. They're not pushed to do amazing things. They're not pushed to change the world. Small business owners are are those people, and so I think finding a way to power them, promote them and help them grow. I mean, I think it's not only just good for them. I think it's good for society writ large. So I'm a huge fan of it. And, and that's really what I'm focused on. All right. Fantastic. Again. Hey, Sean, thank you for your time. Hey, we want to invite everyone back here next week. We have a special guest. We're, we're locking that down. Uh, uh, she's got a very, very busy schedule. Some of you know who she is. Uh, and we'll, we'll be sure to go to BeGrowthDriven.com to get more information. We're going to lock that down and, and confirm it up. We already have it on there, but I want to make sure that it's still going to work with her schedule. So, Sean, thank you again for your valuable Absolutely. time of your day. I, can, I, I look forward to continuing to working with you, you and your team and your product, um, you know, for my clients and, and bringing them the success. You guys are just, you know, you're bringing the fire and I love it. So, Well, thanks again for having me. You, you bet. Thank you. And again, guys, follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, go to BeGrowthDriven.com, sign up, register. We want to hear your stories. We want to hear how you're winning in 2021 as well and be great.